Hi, Lee Ellis here with this month's Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, this month is actually December. That means we have some holidays coming up, Hanukkah, Christmas, a lot of giving. You're probably planning your giving, and I'd like to encourage you to think about a special gift for everybody at home and work. This is a gift that everyone will appreciate. You can give it to everyone, and it won't cost you a dime. Well, it won't cost you any money, but it will cost you a lot because it'll mean sacrifice, maybe even suffering. But the end return is it's a powerful gift that keeps on giving. The gift I'm talking about is the gift of listening. Every person likes to be listened to because when someone is listened to, they feel valued, they feel important. Some of their deepest needs are being met, are being understood and being cared for. So it's so powerful from a relationship perspective, but also from a leadership perspective. Over the years, we've surveyed hundreds of leaders about the attributes of their greatest leader. And we ask people, don't include things like character, we're going to assume good character, and hard worker. Other than that, what was the attribute of your greatest leader? And time and again, it's always things about the person, the relationship side, even the tough results-oriented leaders want to be listened to, heard, developed, cared for, understood. Well, when you listen to someone, it really communicates a lot of those important, deepest needs that we have. So that's why it's so powerful and it works at home and at work. So let's look at this from a logical perspective, first of all. Well, it's about getting clarity. How can I get clarity if I don't listen to what you're saying? Second of all, it's a best practice as I've just mentioned a minute ago. And then it's really about making people feel bad and important, as I just said. Well, now I have taught leadership. I've been a leader for many years of my life. But I'll tell you, I struggle with listening. It's not my, it's not my strength. Because my DNA is such that uh, I'm not very patient. I like to be in control of the conversation, too. I have very strong opinions about things. And so it's so difficult for me to listen and not jump in with my ideas or defend my ideas or try to convince you or tell you how you're wrong and it's just the patience it requires. Well, let's talk about some of the barriers to listening and see how we can actually become better listeners. First of all, as a listener, you have to give up control of your time, of the agenda. This is a lot of giving, isn't it? Giving up for me to give up time, control of my time and my agenda even in my ideas and opinions. Now, I don't give them up completely, but I do have to take them out of the forefront of my thinking and set them on the side. I like to think, okay, if I'm going to really listen to your ideas, I've got to take my ideas and opinions and kind of set them over here on the mantle. I'm not giving up on them. I'm just going to give you a clear shot at my best uh, listening, my best thinking ability to hear what you're saying. So I really want to hear. It also means that... Uh, I'm really going to be, uh, in a moment, listening kind of in a couple of directions. I'm listening to what you're saying, but I'm also reflecting on how that impacts me and letting it coming into me openly, as I said. So giving up control, giving up our time, and setting aside our opinions, but we also have to connect with that person. And when we connect with them, we are uh, showing them but our body language is open to them, that we are receiving them with empathy, maybe if there's emotions they're talking about. We have to show respect for them, that their ideas are important, and they may be different from ours, but we're holding off on that for now. We just want to receive them without judgment, to receive so that we can evaluate, maybe give feedback later, maybe not. Sometimes uh, we have to watch out for that next barrier to being a good listener, and that's a desire to fix it. So often when someone's telling us something, we want to jump in and tell them how to fix it. And what's wrong with that? Well, that is not a good listener. Because the person just wants to be heard. They don't really want us to fix anything yet. They just want to make sure that we understand what they're really saying and where they're coming from. That takes so much discipline to be able to do that. Because the real answer to all of this is discipline, is self-control, to be able to coach ourselves in the moment to hear what the other person is saying, to have empathy for what they're saying, to give them kind of a clean slate to write on within us without giving any judgment or response about fixing it or defending our ideas and opinions, just listening. 
that is so powerful. And maybe asking some good questions, which kind of gets into active listening, to ask him to go deeper. And sometimes just a simple question, is there more, to allow them to go further. It's, it's giving them permission to keep going with that. Very powerful. So active listening, being disciplined to stay in the moment, I find it very hard. Now, a few years ago, I made a real commitment that I was going to become a better listener at home. That was my goal because our kids are grown. I wanted to listen to Mary. She, I'm the, usually the talker. She's the listener. But I knew that to have a closer, more intimate relationship with her as we grew old together, I wanted to be a good listener. Oh, that was hard because my brain, you know, she would say one thing and my brain would jump, jump track and want to go over and think about that thing for a little while and ideas, so ideas are popping off in my head and I'm just trying to stay disciplined and focused on what she's saying. I'm telling you, it was so hard that I finally adopted a mentality of the Kentucky Derby. The horses are coming around the final turn and what do the jockeys do? They bring out the whip. And so I would be mentally whipping myself to stay focused, keep listening, Lee. We're not to the finish line. Keep listening, keep listening, keep listening. That's what it took. Yeah, that was suffering. Yeah, that was sacrifice, but it was a true gift that Mary really appreciated. So now I'm having to learn how to spread that gift in other areas of my world, especially uh, I've done that better with my children uh, and grandchildren, but at work, when I get under pressure, my listening skills just start to fall off the table. So I'm really going to work on that this Christmas. I'm committing to my team that I'm going to work on being a better listener on the phone and in person and they're going to get to hold me accountable. Here it is out in public. I've made it clear and they're going to get to hear it. So I hope that you will think about giving this gift of listening at Christmas. It is so powerful. People really appreciate it. And for many of us, it's one of the most difficult things to do. But for a leader, it's probably one of the most powerful things you can do. And the higher up we go in most organizations, the more we find highly results-oriented leaders. And highly results-oriented leaders will always struggle with listening. Uh, they can listen when they want to listen, but being a good listener is listening when you don't want to listen. That's when it gets really hard. So be a good listener. Give that gift, the gift that keeps on giving year-round, and have a great holiday season. God bless.